Welcome up into the booth. I'm Joel Klatt. This is brought to you by Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville, as Ohio State takes care of business 52-17 here in the opening week of the Big Ten schedule over Nebraska. Now, Ohio State is loaded, and I'll get to all of that, but I think you have to start with the play of the only returning Heisman Trophy finalist in college football, and that's Justin Fields, number one, the quarterback for the Buckeyes. He was terrific today. Uh, there's no way getting around it. Now, could they have protected him a little bit better? Yes, but the bottom line is this. Buckeye fans, you have one of the best players in college football, and he will be as such for the remainder of the season. I think he's actually improved as a passer, which is dangerous for the rest of the Big Ten and maybe even the country as you look uh, even past the Big Ten schedule. You look at his efficiency today. He was 20 of 21 for 276 and two touchdowns. So that 20 of 21 mirrors what Graham Mertz was able to do on Friday night for Wisconsin, and it just shows the level of um, efficiency that he was throwing the football with. I thought he made quick decisions. He was certainly accurate with the ball. That goes uh, without saying when you're 20 of 21. His only incompletion was a ball that was in Chris Olave's hands, and then Olave kind of gets undercut in the end zone and, and takes a hard hit uh, there and ended up dropping the football. That was his only incompletion of the day. Uh, I thought he was in control, and he did what his coach asked him to do, which was don't go out there and try to do too much too early. Just take what the offense, or excuse me, the defense is giving. Stay within the offense and make the plays that are there to be made. He did so with his feet. He did so, obviously, in the passing game, and I thought he played really well. If he continues to play like this, under control, in command of not only their system but what's going on with the defense, then he's going to have a monster year. I think another reason why he was so effective throwing the football is that they're better at the wide receiver position this year than they were a year ago. They might not be as veteran, losing a guy like K.J. Hill, but they are a team that I think is more talented, and we saw that in that second half when Jackson Smith and Jigba made that unbelievable catch at the back of the end zone to get his right foot down. He's a true freshman that was a five-star player that clearly is a guy that's going to help them as this season goes along and as he gets more comfortable in college football and within their system. And he's just going to be a backup to another five-star wide receiver from a year ago in Garrett Wilson, who had a monster day. Now, Garrett Wilson moved from outside last year. Now he's going to be in the slot in that K.J. Hill position. Remember, I bring up K.J. Hill because he set the Ohio State career record uh, with uh, his number of receptions in his career. So you're going to see a lot of Garrett Wilson catching the football. And, and as evidence, you look up at the end of the day, Garrett Wilson, seven catches, 129 yards, one of them for a touchdown. He was tremendous, and he will be a big focal point of this offense moving forward. One question I have, at least as it relates to next week and the status of some of those talented players, is Chris Olave and his health. We saw the scary hit there where he fumbled in the second half, uh, clearly got evaluated there, and they were looking at, at potentially concussion and, and concussion protocol types of things. He went into the uh, locker room there in the second half, as Jenny Taft reported for us, and so his status for next week will be uncertain at least uh, in the next few days, and they're going to need him because their biggest test in the Big Ten I think undoubtedly, with all apologies to the team up north in the Michigan Wolverines, is Penn State. They have been for the last couple of years. That's a team that's going to get them on their home, t home turf there in State College. And they've got a quarterback in Sean Clifford, a new offensive coordinator in Kirk Siraku who comes from Minnesota, and that team is going to be very good. Now, obviously, Journey Brown and Micah Parsons are big absences from that roster. Uh, but that's something that Ohio State's going to need to be full strength. So we'll see the status of Chris Olave moving forward. The other big question I'm going to have is which running back is going to take over for J.K. Dobbins. I thought that Trey Sermon ran a little bit better than Master Teague today. Even though Teague had some nice runs, he's a downhill straight-ahead runner, whereas Trey Sermon's got a little bit more wiggle. So Ohio State fans, from my estimation, moving into next week offensively, you really only have two questions. Which back is going to get the line share of the carries and which back can be more explosive and give you more in the running game? And is Chris Olave going to be on the field? Uh, uh, you know, if, if they can get Olave back and get some production out of the running game, then Penn State's going to have a real hard time stopping this offense because it's one of the most talented in college football. That's where I'll sit next. There's a lot of great offenses out there. This is one of the top three. I think Clemson's offense is, is incredible. Obviously, we see what Alabama can do. They're, they're an incredible offense. But this offense at Ohio State is equally as good as each of those two. They've got the quarterback that uh, I think can take them home. They've got skill on the outside. They've got a great offensive line, in particular with a guy like Wyatt Davis opting back in. The only question now remains to be, 
how well will, will they run the football? So we'll see uh, as the next few games uh, go along. Um, for Nebraska, I think that they were much better than they were a year ago. There's no doubt. If I'm a Nebraska fan, I'm actually encouraged by what I saw today because the defense made strides in areas that they needed to, namely rushing the passer. They got to Justin Fields a few different times. And then on the offensive side, Yes, you don't have a lot at the wide receiver position, but I think you clearly have a couple of quarterbacks that you can build around, and maybe it's going to be McCaffrey moving forward. We'll see what happens with Adrian Martinez. I'm sure that Scott Frost is going to be disappointed that each of those quarterbacks put the ball on the ground uh, with fumbles in this game, but there's something to build on. They need to get the ball to Wondell uh, Robinson more. There's no doubt about that. I think Mills is a pretty good player. Their offensive line clearly is solid, and their tight ends are a really good group. Look for those players to be more the focal point moving forward for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Then we get to those targeting fouls. Listen, folks, the targeting foul in college football has some unintended consequences that has hurt the sport. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind. This rule and this foul more specifically needs to be looked at and there needs to be two categories of targeting so that we can have a targeting penalty during the course of action but then that player is not thrown out of the game because point blank Dante Williams should not have been thrown out of the game in that second half targeting foul uh, when he went up and, and hit Jackson Smith and Jigba that's the type of play that in the past we would have blamed the quarterback for putting a ball in a position where his wide receiver is going to be hung out to dry. We never talk about that anymore because of targeting. We've put the uh, burden of proof on the secondary and not on the quarterback, and I don't believe that that's right. Dante Williams did everything right in this interaction. He went in, he tried to go low under the header neck area. He led with his shoulder. He did everything that a coach would tell him to do. He did everything that the rule book told him to do. But because it looked bad and the wide receiver was, quote, defenseless, they threw him out of the game and then upheld that ruling of targeting. That was a bad call to begin with. It should have been overturned in replay, and it wasn't. And now Nebraska is going to have one of their best players out in the first half of the Wisconsin game. To me, that needs to be revisited. If I'm the Big Ten office, I am revisiting that call. It was the wrong call, and it was upheld improperly in replay. I believe that they need to reinstate Dante Williams for the first half of that Wisconsin game next week. That's the right thing to do, in particular when you're talking about these college athletes and these football players that only have eight opportunities to go out there this year. That means the targeting foul is more penal this year than in previous seasons. That's a consequence that none of us want, in particular when a guy is doing everything right on the field in, in, in terms of what he's coached to do in that interaction, bang-bang interaction with the wide receiver. Uh, that's about all I have to say about that. Uh, elsewhere in action, how about Rutgers? They get an unbelievable performance over Michigan State, and then Graham Mertz kind of announces his presence with authority, Nuclear Lush style up there in Madison with an unbelievable performance in the Badgers beatdown of the Illini uh, on Friday night. So lots of good things happening in the Big Ten. It'll be interesting to see how this conference rolls forward, and in particular later tonight how Michigan and, and uh, Minnesota uh, handle their game, their opening week game uh, in this uh, environment where we don't know what's going to happen week one. We certainly didn't know what was going to happen in this one, in particular early when Nebraska played well early and then Ohio State pulled away late. That's going to do it for In the Booth. I'm Joel Klatt. This, as always, is brought to you by Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. For the best access, perspective, and personalities in all of sports, follow us at Fox Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here, College Football on Fox.